This is Argentina, a nation that just 100 years ago was one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Filled with an abundance of natural resources, a growing population, and plenty of international investment, the future looked promising. Yet today's picture is far from that reality. Argentina has undergone a series of events that have left it crippled to its knees. With over nine defaults in the past century alone and carrying the fourth highest inflation rate globally at percent 124, this nation is on the verge of becoming a failed state. The consequences of such an event could be far-reaching, affecting many countries globally. So how did a nation with so much going for it fail so badly? First, to understand how Argentina got to where it is now, we must look back at its history. In the records of global economic history, Argentina stands out as a confusing case often referred to as the Argentine Paradox. At the dawn of the 20th century, Argentina was rich. Its vast and fertile pampas plains were the bedrock of its wealth, driving economic growth between 1860 and 1930. However, this linear trajectory would soon change. By the 1930s, Argentina's once thriving economy began to show signs of strain. The nation, which had outpaced countries like Canada, Austria, and even Japan in terms of GDP per capita, began to lag. So what happened during this time that started shifting Argentina in the wrong direction? During this period, the Great Depression hit Argentina especially hard, as demand in Europe and the United States for its farm exports suddenly dried up. Struggling to pay its public workers, unrest quickly grew. This tension eventually led the military to stage a coup in 1930, ousting the elected president, Hippolito Uruguayan. This move would later go on to set a trend that plagues Argentina to this day. For the rest of the century, military leaders would often step in during economic crises, overshadowing civilian rule. This constant political upheaval, combined with global economic downturns and inconsistent economic policies, eroded investor confidence. While seemingly harmless, this effect reduced cash flow and created a wound that would eventually bleed Argentina dry. By the 1980s, Argentina was grappling with a mountain of foreign debt, equivalent to three-fourths of its GNP. This was unlike anything in the world at the time. It even drew the attention of a world-renowned economist, Simon Kuznets, who believed Argentina's economic situation was so unique that it needed to be classified under its own class of economy. From there, the late 1980s and early 1990s saw much of the same. Presidents tried to fix the situation but only made matters worse. Take, for example, President Carlos Menem and his economy minister, Domingo Cavallo, who implemented the convertibility plan. This plan pegged the Argentine peso to the US dollar at a one-to-one -one ratio. Initially, this strategy was successful in curbing hyperinflation and fostering growth. However, by the late 1990s, the momentum disappeared. Argentina was once again in a recession with rising unemployment and significant debt. The rigid currency peg became unsustainable, and when the International Monetary Fund IMF, withdrew its support, the country's economy collapsed, leading to the largest ever sovereign default in history at 96 billion US dollars in 2001. While most countries grapple with inflationary pressures from time to time, Argentina's experience has been particularly repetitive. This trend of poor economic policies and political instability carried into the 21st century. Although there was a brief period from 2001 and 2008 of some stability, this abruptly ended with the U.S. financial crisis in 2008. Initially, Argentina showed resilience due to high commodity prices. However, as global demand waned, Argentine exports suffered. This combined with capital flight prompted strict currency controls by the government. Inflation quickly soared and the result was another technical default in 2014. This was the country's second default in just over a decade, and it left it concerning 40% of the population living below the poverty line, with the situation being even grimmer for children in the vicinity of Buenos Aires with a staggering 70% facing poverty. For the average Argentinian, the impact of hyperinflation was felt in the daily grind. Basic necessities like food, clothing, and housing became increasingly expensive, making it challenging for families to make ends meet. Saving for a child's education or home was impossible with the Argentine peso and the value could be halved in a matter of months. This was the reality for the majority of the locals. The plummeting value of the peso made basic goods and food items unaffordable for many, especially those in lower income brackets. After many years of failed economic policies, there was little hope left for people to survive. So instead of pooling their belief in the government, they made an unprecedented move. Argentinians turned to the black market, giving birth to the notorious blue dollar. This move would go on to shape the present state of the economy. The term blue dollar might sound intriguing, but its origins are rooted in the necessity of disguised transactions. As the government tightened controls on foreign currency, a black market for dollars emerged. 
In this market, the US dollar, distinct from the official rate, is locally termed the blue dollar, due to its unofficial nature. The rate for the blue dollar is determined by supply and demand dynamics, often reflecting the public's confidence, or lack thereof, in the government's economic policies. In this shadowy market, US dollars are traded in cambios, which are technically illegal exchanges, at rates significantly higher than the official exchange rate, reaching up to three times the official rate posted. However, the blue dollar market is not without its challenges. Engaging in these unofficial transactions carries legal risks, and the very existence of such a market underscores the broader issues facing Argentina's monetary system. And it doesn't solve everyone's problems. The poor still have a hard time getting by. Many poor communities across the country are struggling to access food and basic needs. The blue dollar isn't accessible to everyone, making these communities that much more vulnerable to changes. So what have these poor communities done to cope with the current situation? In a method seen millennia ago, back before currencies were a thing, barter was used for the exchange of goods, and barter has come to Argentina. In response to this economic downfall, poor locals have established true clubs instead. Predominantly led by women, these clubs serve as bartering hubs where individuals can trade goods and food for other essentials, bypassing the need for any currency. The resurgence of these bartering clubs is reminiscent of the early 2000s when Argentina faced a similar economic crisis. These clubs were a lifeline for many during those challenging times. Now, two decades later, they are witnessing a revival as Argentina deals with another economic downturn. Yet, how long this system will keep working is hard to say. Given the dire state of the economy, it likely won't be anytime soon. So the question remains on the minds of many Argentinians. Can the current political party steer the nation out of this deepening crisis? In August 2023, the official inflation rate reached 124.4%, the most since August 1991. In addition, Argentina's external debt reached 275.1 billion US dollars. It's clear the government hasn't solved any of the problems. But will these economic woes continue the next year? Or is there a new hope ahead? Turns out there may be a small light at the end of the tunnel, albeit it's dim. The new proposed 2023 budget has a reduction in total spending of 29 trillion dollars pesos with the majority of it going to social welfare. Nearly 20 trillion of this budget is just for social welfare. That's an incredibly high amount and may ease some of the struggles for the lower and middle class citizens. It also forecasts a GDP growth of 2% and a reduction in the fiscal deficit from 2.5% to 1.9%. How does this compare to previous years? Well, it is a reduction in spending which is a good thing for inflation. But it could also mean harder times ahead for its citizens even with all the spending on social welfare. The budget also forecasts inflation to reach 60% next year, despite independent analysts and observers putting the figure in triple digits. So that too would be a reduction since inflation is at record highs. But is inflation at 60% any good? Not really. That is still an extremely high inflation rate. So while different governments have tried to fix the economy, finding a lasting solution has been tough. Will Argentina find the right solutions to turn things around? Or will this country, once known for its wealth and promise, face even tougher times ahead? If you found this deep dive into Argentina's economy interesting and want to learn more about similar topics, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. Until next time, see you in the next video.